Ja, jetzt haben wir einen Gast aus Kanada, Montreal, Herr Dimitrios Rosopoulos. Ähm, er spricht über Räte und den Staat, er ist politischer Aktivist, er ist Herausgeber, Begründer der Kampagne für nukleare Abrüstung, Mitbegründer der International Confederation for Disarmament and Peace, ISDP, Begründer von Black Rose Books, er hat selber, also Black Rose Books hat mehr als 500 Titel herausgegeben, er selber hat auch zahlreiche Bücher geschrieben, ich habe gehört 18 Bücher und er setzt sich mit dem Konzept äh, Social Ecology auseinander, auf, äh, die sich auch Abdullah Öcalan bezieht, mit der Dezentralisierung von Macht, mit partizipatorischer Demokratie und er berichtet uns aus der Praxis der Stadt Montreal. Herzlich willkommen. First, and very important, a really warm and sincere thank you to the organizers of this very important conference for inviting me and the various movements and organizations from which I come. I want to say that this impressive conference organized in such a passionate way with such warmth and generosity has deeply touched me. So a wonderful thank you to the organizers of this conference. Every year at the end of January or February, a large group of immoral and evil people meet in Davos, Switzerland at the World Economic Forum to plan their nightmare over the planet in the name of the world economy. But since 2001, a new transnational movement emerged, the World Social Forum. And two days ago, I think it was more or less two days ago, I arrived from Tunis at the most recent World Social Forum, where more than 44,000 activists from some 5,000 social movements from across the planet met in a hundred different venues in over 1,000 workshops to discuss what our strategy, our networking strategy, our horizontally directed strategy should be to confront the new world economic order. And I speak from that experience when I invite you to think of what is going on all over. We are not alone. There's a tremendous sense of emerging international solidarity of which I hope the Kurdish struggle is a centerpiece. <laughs> Dear friends, practice without theory is useless. But theory without practice is even more useless. It is my intention to very briefly present to you an important case study, one case study among several. Montreal, an island city of close to three million people in one of the largest rivers in North America, the St. Laurent, which flows from the Great Lakes into the powerful North Atlantic, an island city which is the most decentralized city in all of North America. 
And that decentralization is the fruit of the urban left in that city beginning in the 1960s. And it has important political consequences in the day-to-day -day politics on the ground, the practical organizational politics. Because since the 1960s, a number of key ideas have been carried forward and have borne fruit. From about 2000, 2001, for example, the movements, the social movements, which I have been active in, and when I say active, I mean active. That is to say, helping to build, helping to connect people together, helping to connect neighborhoods together. The decentralization of that city is based upon 19 different districts and boroughs. And most of those districts and boroughs have neighborhood assemblies, neighborhood associations, where people meet regularly interact, establish network relationships, whether it is cooperative housing, whether it is urban transportation, whether it is fighting against gentrification, an ongoing struggle that brings people together. And since 2000, 2001, a very interesting but old and respected idea has taken root, the assembly the Citizens' Assembly, how people can get together on a regular basis to work out what should be done, what should be opposed, what is the alternative. This movement has been focused at the metropolitan level by the organization of five key citizen assemblies, each one larger than the other. It started in 2001 with the first citizen assembly, and I don't have the time, unfortunately, to go into the details of this process, as important as it is. But I will be outside at the book table for those of you who are interested in discussing this even further. But the significant thing is that it brought together this citizen assembly process, which started in 2001, inspired by the World Social Forum, to 2009, from 250 activists to over, two th uh, over 1,200 activists by the Fifth Citizen Assembly, radiating and permeating throughout the city and its neighborhoods, and ending with some major accomplishments. For example, a citizen's agenda on how to occupy the urban space and how to transform it with very concrete proposals which were attractive to the ordinary men and women, activists, concerned citizens who came together to discuss them and to agree and disagree and agree on the common denominator with which to move forward. All of this assemblyism, this horizontalism, if you will, affected not only people in the neighborhood, but also the new generation that came forward. So that when people outside of Montreal started to hear about the Maple Spring in 2012, the hundreds of thousands of students at the university and secondary level who became engaged in first opposing the increased tuition fee that the state wanted to impose to them, and slowly but surely moved into a larger social agenda, even to the point of advocating a social strike. Where did these ideas come from? Well, they did not fall from the trees. They were germinating and growing uh, in the many years, preparatory years at the neighborhood level, so that when the hundreds of thousands of students and young people uh, were out in the streets demonstrating every 22nd day of the month. The neighborhoods were also taking part. Every day at 8 o'clock in the evening, hundreds and thousands of people would be coming out of their homes, banging their kettles, banging their frying pans in solidarity with the demands of the growing social movement. And that is what we characterize the Maple Spring of 2012, 
which, by the way, brought down the government. The government was defeated. And a new government was elected on the promise that they would stop certain things. And of course, as governments inevitably do, they betrayed some of those uh, promises. And so the second government and the second political party was defeated within the first six to eight months when it assumed power. So the street has power. It has power to bring those people down. And we must not forget that, ever. The underlying and enduring riverbed throughout, before, during, then, and now, that informs this very important social movement, which brings together young and old, men and women, neighborhoods across the geographic space, are very much inspired by some of the ideas that we've been talking about here very much inspired by social ecology and the ideas of Murray Bookchin. Because can you imagine a general strike of students of hundreds of thousands, all decision-making processes were based upon assembly meetings, directly democratic assembly meetings, where you would have huge spaces like this packed with people debating and discussing what are we going to do tomorrow? How are we going to do it? What are we going to do next week? And how are we going to do it? Everything was discussed openly, and the commercial media were going bananas. They said, how can they possibly decide, make these major political decisions as to what their movement is going to do by always having these goddamn general assemblies and talking about direct democracy? Who are the representatives? Who are the leaders? Well, there they were, in their hundreds of thousands. <laughs> the assembly is the basis of social reconstruction of community. And I don't have, again, I'm sorry I don't have the time to give you the full flavor of it, but let me just conclude by saying, because I really want to get into a discussion mode with as many of you as possible. The assembly is the basis of the social reconstruction of, uh, of community. And at the heart of this is the right of the city movement. Because we are occupying urban space, we are understanding the importance of neighborhood, living neighborhoods. We are understanding the importance of knowing our neighbors, of finding ways, intelligent ways, empathetic ways, passionate ways in which we relate to our neighbors. And this right to the city movement recently adopted in Sao Paulo a global charter on the right to the city. And this movement, with its commitment to occupy urban space, is based on a confederal framework. A framework which is slowly and systematically moving towards Another very important vision, from the right to the city, to take over the city. We want to take over the city. And so our concluding conviction with all of you is all power to the people. I want to end by showing you a short video of one minute, because you know what? It's starting all over again. From 1912, from 2012 to 2015, it's starting all over again. And those students, those young people, are out in the streets again, which is what this short video is going to show you. And on April the 11th, on April the 11th in Quebec City, a huge confrontational demonstration is going to take place in Quebec City surrounding the National Assembly buildings and who knows what's going to happen at that point. Thank you for your attention.
ça se met au centre. Kannst du mal sagen, dass das von der Technik mit dem Ton kommen soll? Ich weiß gerade nicht, wie das geht. Ja, auf jeden Fall an dieser Stelle schon mal herzlichen Dank für diesen spannenden Vortrag von Dimitri Rosopoulos. Wir haben jetzt anscheinend hier ein Problem mit der Technik, dem Ton von dem Film. Das hat nicht funktioniert. Can we, because At the same time, everyone can wear your cast. Okay. Can be the target. Yes, that Does that work? Okay. Shushi, this sign is like you are the target of austerity. And actually, anyone can wear your At the same time, everyone can be the target of austerity. We don't see where our tax money is going, we don't see it. The state is changing into a repressive state that's gearing up essentially for the mass mobilization that's inevitable because people resist. I think that everybody in this society has to be here down in the industry because it's directed toward everybody. There's 30 million being cut in education, which includes the colleges. Some colleges are actually um, being threatened uh, with uh, closure. The government is assuming this uh, iron fist kind of attitude where it's like, we're not backing down, we're not giving in, we're just going to increase the police apparatus, the surveillance apparatus, and buff up our riot, the riot cups that you can see behind you. We're not backing down. So sooner than later, you guys need to listen up because this is just the beginning. Want more? Download the AJ Plus. Ja, vielen herzlichen Dank, Dimitri, für diesen äh, spannenden Vortrag und auch den Film, der wirklich auch rüberbringt, äh, dass auch im Herzen der kapitalistischen Moderne Widerstand möglich ist, Basisorganisierung Dinge schon verändern kann. Das ist ja auch das, was die kurdische Bewegung versucht, auch zum Beispiel in Türkei, Kurdistan äh, schon Räte aufzubauen und äh, die Utopie schon umzusetzen und nicht darauf zu warten, bis man den Staat vollkommen weggefegt hat, wie es jetzt in Rojava der Fall ist.